so that's the scoop there. I uh, really want to get to the speaker, have heard her presentation before, and have now invited her to speak at places where I'm in charge of the speaker because what Susan shares is so important to what we're about, what we're all doing, especially for 2012. Uh, when I say, do you have your dot mobi? I didn't know what the heck that was, so I know Susan's going to share some fabulous things with you today. Susan Dakazaku has been involved in computer technology for over 30 years when there wasn't really even computer technology. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. She, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she, you know, her degree was made up from a conglomeration and, uh, of classes and somebody said, okay, you can make that a degree. She also has been a business owner for over 12 years, so she understands that internet marketing is more about your business bottom line than it is about the technology cutting edge. There are five C's of effective internet marketing, and today Susan will focus on four. Please help me welcome Susan Dakazaka with the four C's. Thank you, Good morning, everyone. I think I know a good number of you, so I don't really need to introduce myself, but just for those of you who don't know, Susan Dakazaka with Acceleration Services started focusing on the internet in 2004, and for those of you who know Bill, that's my husband. Uh, we're really excited about what we see in 2012 because what I'm going to show you today are some ideas and some things that are coming up in technology that are going to help you exponentialize what you're already doing. So you're not having to reinvent the wheel as much as just making use of what's already out there. Um, what I wanted to share with you, how many people out here want to get more customers in 2012? Anybody? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robbie stood up. All right. <laughs> well, and the reason I mention that is because I want you to focus on how this is going to help you get more customers. They say there's a lot of fish in the sea, but how many feel like you're out there fishing for customers and fishing and you're not getting <laughs> bites and they say, well, there's a lot of, you know, they're out there. Maybe you're not using the right bait. So what I'm going to teach you today is teach you how to fish. So next year when you see all these things that come up in terms of marketing, you can evaluate whether it's going to work for you or how to make it work for your business. Is that fair? Okay. So what we're going to do is cover a lot of uh, different things, but I want to focus on whether you're, the internet is an expense or an asset. Because we all know we don't have time for expenses that aren't bringing any return. Yes. You need to make sure that whatever you're doing, because time is money. And if you say, well, this is free. Coming to events or doing things that are free that aren't bringing you business is actually costing you, right? Because you're not spending your time and energy on stuff that's going to create a return. So I want you to have an aha today. I didn't know that. I could do that. And so put something on your to-do list. Because for those of us who've been to a lot of seminars, you're going to say, oh, that was great. And then you go out in the busy world and you forget. So before you leave, my goal for you is to write one thing on your to-do list so that you have something that's going to result in today. Okay, I talked to, actually there's that five C's. <laughs> We're only going to cover four today. Uh, I'm going to cover briefly the, the first three because you'll need to understand them and how they apply to the fourth C. Conversion. Meaning that if you send somebody, and we'll talk about websites for now, somebody to your website, if you don't have a very effective website, would you agree that it's not going to result in much business? Yes. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So the idea is to have a powerful, effective website. So I'm going to co cover the magic formula so that you can understand what the elements are for any effective internet marketing or any marketing in general. The, let me tell you where the magic formula came from. Back in 2004, I mentioned I started my business. Actually, in 99, I started going to out networking. I went to a chamber event, and we were all given 30 seconds. Have you ever been to a situation where they give you 30 seconds to talk about what you do? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, if I said my name and my business and this is what I do, the number of calls I could expect to get from that were zero, because I wouldn't want to call me. <laughs> it sounded boring. Or, or basically, how is that going to help me? So what I did was I did a 30-second commercial that sounded like this. Hi, my name is Susan Dakuzaku, and before I tell you what I do, I want you to think about the last time you were trying to reach a potential client, or a current customer, or maybe your boss or coworker had a great idea, and you couldn't get that idea across. Have you ever done that? And you were frustrated, you might have felt like you were up a creek without a paddle. Well, I'm in the paddle business. <laughs> I teach businesses how to make connections in 30 seconds or less. If you would like to know more, I have a workshop going on next week. 
as well as I'm a member of Toastmasters. If you want to know more about that organization, please, please see me, Susan Dr. Zaka with Acceleration Services. So if you time me, that's probably about 30 to 35 seconds. I had two people come to my workshop, one person joined Toastmasters, and two people approached me about speaking on that topic for the brown bags. So five versus zero. I said, this is something that I can teach because what I'm going to teach you is the magic formula, which is the elements of what I just did. First of all, the M in the magic is the message. You only got 30 seconds. And on the internet, you may think you can have a 50-page website, but most people are just looking at it and leaving unless they see something that's interesting to them. So the thing you have to focus on in those 30 seconds, what's my message? What's the most important thing I want to convey? And if you have a lot of different products and services, you can only focus on maybe one, two, or three. You can't focus on 50, because you can't do that in 30 seconds, effectively. So you have to focus on the message. The A is the audience. Who are you speaking to? Are you speaking to professionals, business owners, PTA moms? Whoever your audience is, you need to hone down your message for them. Because then if you're trying to speak, oh, anybody's my client, if you say anybody's my client, how am I going to identify that as your potential client? Does that make sense? And for those of you, we, do, we did videotape a longer presentation that's on the internet, so I'm giving you just the gist, but there is more information on the internet. You need to grab their attention. There is a great book out there called The Purple Cow. And Seth says, to stand out in, in a world of competition, and we all have competition, yes, how do you stand out? You've got to be purple cow in a brown cow world. So you need to say something different in a different way, better than your competition that's going to grab their attention. Say, oh, that sounds good. Again, 30 seconds, you've got to grab their attention. I, involve their emotion. I am a left brain analytical political being involved in computers for 30 years. And this was something that took me a while to get. You need to give the person the win in that 30 seconds. Great speaker Jim Rohn says, we make change for one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. So you need in 30 seconds to hit that hot button with that business owner, with that PTA mom. What's their hot button and how can I convey that? in 30 seconds or less. And the very last and most important thing is the call to action. Once you've got them involved and interested and you told them the story, what do you, what do you want them to do? I can't tell you how many websites I've seen where the phone number is on the Contact Us page. What happens if somebody is looking on the About page and says, oh, I'm going to call that person, and then their phone rings, or somebody walks in their door, and they just got distracted. There's so much going on there, you have to make that call me button right there, or fill out this form, or buy this thing now, because if you don't make it easy, one, they may get lost, or they get distracted, and you may just have lost them. So that magic formula, you can condense, and this applies to your 30 second commercial, to your um, website, to your print ads. Take that idea and ask the questions. What's the message, audience, grab their attention, involve the emotion, call to action? That being said, can anybody tell me the 30 second commercial I did to the chamber at the beginning of this presentation? Any points that you remember? Paul? Uh, definitely the paddle reference. The paddle. Now, why does that stick out? Uh, because it's, a, it's a, uh, a very common saying. Mm -hmm. Common, so you identify, involve the emotion, identify with that. Somebody said, I think it was you, Carrie, said it told a story mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. It does. It fit what people expect, and it's memorable. Purple cow. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So in that 30 seconds, I was able to tell a story, be a purple cow, convey a message, and a call to action. Because the last thing I said was, seminar, Toastmasters. And I tell people, do you think it was a coincidence that I just happened to be doing a seminar the week after doing that presentation? <coughs> No, you plan it. If you have an opportunity to speak or you're running an ad, make sure there's a good call to action. Not someday I can do a seminar for you. It's I am doing a seminar next week. See me after if you want to come. Or click this button if you want to come. Again, that whole magic formula. So that's just an example of how you apply that. Yes? So where are you speaking next week? Actually, you have to ask Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> next month. 
Vermont, actually. <laughs> All right. I said, so where are you speaking right now? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was the first C in Internet Marketing, which was conversion. Now you've got this website or this ad on the Internet or whatever it is. How are you driving traffic there? Because if you have a great website and no traffic, how many customers can you get? Zero. And Jim Rohn says zero is not a good number. So you need to increase your conversion and increase traffic. And again, there's more information on the internet. I don't want to spend a lot of time because I want to go on to the fourth C. The third C is cost effectiveness. We were talking about free is not free if it's costing you time and energy, right? Just because it's not taking money out of your pocket directly, it's costing you because you're spending your time doing stuff that's not very effective. So you want to evaluate, what am I spending? And if you've got the conversion good and the traffic good, you should be able to figure out if you're making money at it. And if you don't know, you need to do the math. And there's, again, there's more information on the internet. I just wanted to, to put that in your head. But I, when I'm so excited about the fourth C, I think this is one of the most cost-effective things you can do on the internet. And, th and that's what we're going to talk about today and spend a lot of time focusing on. Oh, also I want to point out, cost of doing nothing. If you're not doing some of these things and your competition is, it is costing you, yes, because you're possibly losing your share of that market. I think it was Woody Allen says, you don't have to be light years ahead of your competition. It's got to be like 43 seconds. Some of the things you're going to learn today, your competition likely doesn't know because most of the business owners that I talk to, it's new to them. So hopefully what you get out of today is going to give you those 43 second lead that you're going to need in 2012 to stay ahead of your competition. Okay, the fourth C is the conduit. I'm going to share with you some, some statistics. 79% of smartphone users use their device to help with shopping. How many smartphone users are there, out there right now? Good majority. We're starting to use this more and more, yes, because they're faster, powerful. So that's what the uh, market is doing. 25% of US mobile phone users are mobile only, which means they don't access from a desktop. They're out there on their iPads or their smartphones accessing the internet. Isn't that interesting? We say US because Europe and Asia is way ahead of us in terms of the use of this stuff. So we're starting to catch up. Mobile searches have quadrupled in the last year. For many items, one in seven searches are now mobile. Yes? It's actually hard now. Yeah. I mean, this is changing like exponentially as we, as we speak. 38%. 38%. Because they're saying that if you see an ad on TV, oh, oh, that looks like an interesting thing. You're on your smartphone or your iPad checking it out, doing searches, looking for testimonials. So we are relying on these things more and more to help us with our shop shopping. So is your customer base doing the same thing? 71% of smartphone users use, uh, see a TV ad press, that's just what we talked about. They see it in a paper, but they're looking for more information here. Last stat. A uh, number of people uh, accessing the mobile internet is expected to overtake the PC by 2015. Holy moly. So you got a, a three, four year kind of jump on that. Start thinking about it now. Somebody said, well, you, Robbie, were saying that you don't want to start thinking about this when you need it. You need to start planning for this now. So the seed I want to do for you today is planting the seed that this is a trend. And if your market is mobile, you need to mobilize your marketing. Okay. So this is a typical website. Uh, this is a website that I did for a jeweler up in Reading, actually. So let's look at that from the, from the magic formula. This is actually a slideshow. I'm going to have to find myself. Slideshow. So it shows pictures of her work. It's got a link to her show schedule so people know where to find her. Got a newsletter sign up so people can be told where she's going to be. It's got her blog, the kind of stories of where she's been. Call to actions are things like custom commission work and those kinds of things. Now, take that same website and put it on a mobile device. Not very good, is it? It was a nice website on the internet, but on a mobile device, not so much. Jeremy Epstein wrote, here's a news flash. If you have a website, you're already in the mobile world. And 
the chances are you're making a terrible impression. Right? We talked about the magic formula. Well, this website on a mobile phone is completely changing. So what happens if you create a mobilized version of the website? Looks much better. Much better. Same things. Easy to navigate. Show schedule, Etsy store, because she sells online. Uh, sign up for my newsletter. Call us now. Check out our blog. So it's basically condensed that information onto a mobile site. Yes, Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Say you have a website. How does, uh, if someone's using a smartphone, they're just going to get the awful looking. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the secret. There's well, a secret. Be a third of it if you have a regular website. Okay, so let's, let's answer that question. So what you want to do, let me point out just for a second sure. for those of us who don't have smartphones that you created those buttons also. Yes. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. Well, it's a mobilized, so we create right. websites. Right. We now create mobile websites because they're kind of covering two different needs. Okay, somebody's on the computer, are they going to get the mobile? Let me tell you about on that. On the big computer. Right? Okay, hang on, hang on. Next slide. Optimize, so you want to basically optimize the text, images, and story. You don't want to put your whole website global because, again, you've got to focus on the message. For that mobile audience, for this particular product or service, what are you trying to convey? Because they only have this much to see. So again, focus the story and the text and the images for that. And widgets on the phone like Call Me Now, yeah, they need to be right. mobile, uh, off for the mobile device as well. Provide key points and sound bites, videos. Anything you can put in a little smartphone is good. Basically, it's marketing in a nutshell. Uh, select your contact, again, for the mobile audience in mind. Okay, so you asked a question. You can put a script on a website, so if somebody actually goes to their phone and types in your www.mywebsite.com, it will forward them to your mobile website. Isn't that cool? So the system is smart enough you, to know where, no, where no, it's the coming from. The system's stupid. <laughs> the system does what you tell it to do. What you need to do is have your webmaster put a script in your side your website so it will detect that the access device is mobile oh, okay. and so then forward them to the mobile version. Okay, yeah. so it's this. Yes. Yeah. So uh, does anybody not know what a QR code is? You guys are pretty cutting edge. Yeah, yeah, sharp all. These little QR codes is what's going to help you because these are basically shortcuts to a mobile website. The advantage is, is that um, you can print this on anything. We talked about exponentializing everything you do. If you are producing business cards or flyers or anything, your shirts, uh, anything, I'm actually going to have it on my car in about two hours, right, Robbie? Yep. Okay, two hours, it's going to be on my car. Anything you can print on now has a direct connection to the internet for people who have these phones. And we saw the numbers, increasing number. I think that's huge. Because whether you're doing uh, trade shows, we talk, we'll get, go into some examples. Yes. Well, what's that going to do for you, having one of those QR codes on your vehicle? When, okay, who, who saw my car out there today? Somebody said, I, I saw your car out there today. Rebranding, remarketing. The nice thing about the car, and I, and I tell Robbie this all the time, I said, it's one of the smartest things you can do as far as marketing. Because do you know how much a billboard costs? Ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars a month. Three, well, I, the, I think the normal one is like three thousand dollars. It's a, it's more expensive than most of us want to spend but, on a billboard. But my question was, what would that little square? Well, let me tell you. So I drive my car everywhere. Yeah. It's out there all the time. It's a one-time cost. It's going to be there as long as I have my car. I've had people stop me in the street, basically Ferrugs Boulevard, roll down their window, and say, "Do you have a car?" Because they see it, they say, oh, I'm interested in that, they want information. Right now, all it has is my www.getyourknittinggear.com. And in two hours, it will have my QR code. So if I'm sitting in the parking lot, they can click on it, go to my mobile website, and see a video, see a link to this presentation, see uh, examples of my work. Excuse me, I'm not connected. Yeah. That little QR code is that squiggly little square thing. Thing. It's a square. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that is going to be on your vehicle? Yep. What are they going to do? Take a picture of that thing yep. up close? You think they will? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, there's a, there's a program on smartphones where they can read that. They'll walk up with their phone and they'll take a picture of that. Okay. And then it shows up to their website with their phone number. Got it. So it's a, it's a way to interpret right to their phone. So it's I instant wasn't access. Aware of that. yeah. That's what See, this is what you, this is your aha, right? Did you yeah, get an aha? That's, that's an aha. <laughs> <laughs> Only yeah. everything I print. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, free hey, websites hey, to create hey, QR codes hey, too. Because Billy, you were saying <laughs> you do a lot of cold calling, yes. Yeah. So if you leave them your business card or flyer, especially if their phone's ringing and they don't have a lot of time to talk, you can say, you know, I can see you're busy. Let me leave you some information. Yeah. If your QR code was on that, they can take a picture of it and see a video, see testimonials yeah. from your customers, see more information than you could possibly print. That's cool. I didn't know. That's cool. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes. We got 15, we 15 minutes after. Okay. So what? how much more time do I got? Five minutes. Okay. We will wrap it up. <laughs> Okay, so vendors, if you have a store, put your QR code by your store window because if they get there too early or too late, they can take a picture and know when you're open. Businesses display at your cash register, same reason. More products and services, sign up for our newsletter so you can be notified of new sales. Restaurants, please leave a, hap you know, a happy testimonial for your services. Put this QR code. Networking, have it on your badge. In fact, where's my badge? the back of your badge. Anything you have, they can take a picture. Now capture all your information instead of pocket full of business cards. Now it can be in your phone. Print everywhere. We talked about the cars. Okay. Running through. <coughs> There's my car now. You'll see the QR code on the side pretty quick. Tips. Register a dot mobi. Okay, I've done some research and Paul, maybe you kind of get a sense of this too. My feeling is you can do a subdomain or a .mobi. There's other ways to do it. But my recommendation is to register the .mobi because it's becoming the .com of the mobile world. And if you don't grab your name, your Somebody competition will. can. Yeah. So for the $10 a year, grab your .mobi. And that way, when you print it on your car, you don't have to worry about changing it because you own the name. Right? OK. Add logic, we talked about this. Add logic to your main website to automatically direct people to your mobile site. Not that hard to do. Verbal Cal, your QR code. Did you notice it on this and Marketing Square? Let me see if you can example. It's mm -hmm. Purple Cow it. Don't make it the same old square box because nobody's going to look at it because it's the same old square box. You can colorize them, you can add graphics to them, you can detest it when you do it. Especially if you're going to put it on your car, you want to make sure it's going to work for you. Um, so if you, if you go to marketingsquare.com, you like that name?